I would like to tell you about vCoys, what vCoys are, and how we can uh, use them to tackle one of the biggest challenges of the human race. So uh, starting with this uh, Venn diagram of uh, a moonshot, uh, my favorite circle here is uh, the first one. Um, the, the, the next uh, two ones are quite trivial. There is a lot of clever people working on new technologies. Uh, but um, tying these technologies to a, a, worth, um, um, a worthy cause, that's something else. And uh, I think this is also one of the biggest contributions of this event here. So let's talk about the big problems. Actually, um, the, U, the, the biggest problems that we have, the doomsday scenarios. Um, how may the world end? So. Okay. Oh. Okay. So the world might end uh, in ice um, by um, a dramatic climate change. I read this is for you, or uh, it may extinguish in fire uh, in a, a nuclear disaster of some sort. Maybe uh, you're envisioning a rock, a rock falling falling from the stars and uh, annihilating um, all life on the planet. So all these are plausible scenarios, but there is another one. There is um, a scenario that is surrounding us all the time, and it's, uh, it's something that might happen every day. This picture was taken uh, less than 100 years ago. The year is uh, 1918. The, um, the occurrence is the sp Spanish flu uh, pandemic. Uh, it came from nowhere. Nobody knew when it would go, and it spread like wildfire around the planet. Um, these were the same days uh, of, the, of World War I. While World, uh, World War I uh, had a death toll of 19 million people, the Spanish flu killed over 40 million people in just two years. Now, um, how better off are we today if this had occurred, if we had a Spanish flu to today? Are we better off? Actually, we're worse. With an over-densed planet and international flights, uh, there is no way to stop something like that. And if you recall the panic of the avian flu, uh, that was justified because there were um, 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 stressing similarities between the two strains of uh, flu, of the of avian flu and the Spanish flu. So viral pandemics is one of the biggest threats to uh, the world uh, safety. Uh, this could uh, be a death toll of going on to the billions, and we don't want to get there. Don't take it from me, take it from Nobel Prize laureate Joshua Lederberg that said that the single biggest threat to man's continued dominance on the planet is a virus. A virus. So a virus is not just uh, your sudden spike of fever or a nausea that goes the other day. Some of the worst pathologies known to man are viruses. HIV AIDS is a virus, and influenza, one of the most, most uh, uh, alarming viruses. Dengue fever, hepatitis C, hepatitis B, polio, herpes, biowarfare agents like Ebola and smallpox, all viruses. Now this list goes on and on, but viruses are also um, associated, associated with pathologies that people usually don't correlate with viruses. For instance, viruses cause cancer. Papilloma virus causes cancer. HIV causes cancer. So does herpes and many other viruses. Autoimmune diseases might stem from a viral infection that aggravates the immune system so much that the immune system starts uh, to fight the body instead of its foes. And even psychiatric diseases, there is the born of virus that may cause a depression-like symptom in horses. Horses become depressed while the, when the virus reaches their brains. They stop eating, stop being socialized, um, being suicidal, and then they die. So if a virus can cause a horse depression, why not humans? So I would like to say that the X, uh, one of the biggest Xs, is a virus. Now, surely, with such a big problem, we must have some solutions, right? So we're going to the doctor, and we're coming with this viral infection. And we're asking for a remedy. And what do we get, most of the cases? It's incredible. Uh, in the uh, uh, 21st century, with nanotech and internet and space flights, the state of the art for viruses is chicken soup and some rest. Get some rest in chicken soup and wear it off, which won't work for most viruses. Uh, such as HIV, for instance. What do you do with that? Chicken soup? So, well, we do have a, a few more in our arsenal. We have vaccines, which is a wonderful thing to have if you can get one that actually works. Um, it's also a 200-year-old technology, and it's prophylactic, meaning you have to give it to a healthy person before infection. Uh, and for most viruses, we don't have any vaccines at all. Um, and if it's post-exposure, meaning the person is already sick, we have just a handful of medicines, which are the cocktail drugs. A cocktail sounds like a fun thing to have, but actually these are highly toxic drugs and their um, efficacy is very low. 
this is how um, uh, any viral infection looks like. And the antiviral drugs are basically drugs that penetrate the already infected cell to inhibit the cell within, they inhibit the virus within the infected cell. And this is, of course, too late. Now, as a biologist, I, uh, I, biologist, I care dearly about this problem. And um, the reoccurrence of a Span Spanish flu in our times is something that keeps me awake at nights. And um, I want to share with you uh, an invention of mine, uh, a vision of mine of how to treat viral infections in a different manner. I think we are uh, uh, addressing this entire um, problem uh, in, in the wrong way. Maybe we're not supposed to deal with viruses inside cells, but outside of cells before they infect the cells. So three years ago, coming out of the Singularity University, I crossed the lines from being a scientist to being an entrepreneur, and I started uh, Vicoy Nanomedicines. Um, now, Vicoy is not just the name of a company, it's the name of a technology. Vicoy stands for virus decoy, which is basically what we're doing. It's not always easy to do, but it's very easy to grasp. Basically, we're creating traps. So just like if you had a mouse in your house, you would use a mouse trap, we're creating virus traps. These are nanospheres that have the capability to absorb viruses within, within the bloodstream of a patient. Here's, here's how, how it looks like. This is a, a figure from our patent pending application. What you can see here is that uh, our structure is a complex two-layered structure. The inner structure uh, interacts readily with viruses, uh, both um, binds them and um, um, breaks them to debris. The outer layer is a porous layer that is basically uh, meant to camouflage the inner layer from the immune system so it will have a longer circulation time in the body. And as you can see, uh, since it's porous, viruses could cross very readily through the outer layer into the inner layer. This cartoon would probably show it better. Uh, you can see uh, uh, this is the case of a virus approaching a vicoy particle. And on the bottom, you can see a magnification. So the, vi the virus approaches the vicoy, crosses through the outer layer, and then meets its maker uh, when it um, approaches the inner layer. And just for scale, you can see on the right a red blood cell. So everything here is smaller than a cell. Now, um, is, let's talk about this technology. This is a completely new notion. This, there is a, absolutely nothing like that. But it's not just a notion. This is science in the making. I would like to take you to a short tour to the lab. We're doing um, a lot of collaborations with Professor Ido Batselet. Um, and in the background, you can see uh, our particles, our an antiviral vicoy particles. Let's take a zoom on that. So these are vicoy particles. You can see on the bottom right uh, the scale of four microns, meaning everything you're seeing in this picture is smaller than a human cell. A few more pictures of our vicoys. And I hope you can appreciate they're not only unique, but they're also very beautiful. They're like microscopic corals. Where um, it's important to understand that uh, the secret sauce here is not a specific material, but a structure. So we are making these particles from many different types of materials, including um, uh, funky and exotic, exotic materials, such as DNA. We're also using DNA, uh, DNA origami to fold these buckyballs into um, virus uh, decoys. Now, once we have created a decoy particle, what do we do with it? First of all, we... Um, um, we cultivate, we um, incubate it with uh, live viruses. And you can see on, on the right, um, a lot of uh, white bulbs on the surface of a single vicoy trap. One is circle, cir circled for you. What you're seeing here is tens of viruses captured on the surface of a single trap. What you're not seeing is that there are already thousands, potentially th hundreds of thousands of viruses inside a single trap. Here are a few more pictures of viruses captured by our traps. And uh, if I may say so, this is really exciting science. This was never been done before. So once we have shown that our particles uh, can absorb viruses, we're taking them through several screening systems. The first one is uh, a cellular system. And on the left, you can see happy, healthy looking cells. This is how cells are supposed to look like. The cells in the middle are infected. We drip viruses into their medium. And while the viruses are too small to see in this kind of mi light microscopy, you can see their morphology is, is quite uh, changed, and they will all eventually die. The, the, the cells on the right got the same treatment, but we also incubate them with our vicoy particles, the one the, um, uh, designated, uh, uh, in indicated by uh, the, the blue arrows. You can see our traps are much smaller than cells. And what they do is they act like microscopic vacuum, vacuum cleaners. They suck up viruses from the medium before they enter the cells. We were able to capture 97% of the viruses in the medium uh, in these experiments. We also moved to animal uh, models, both in insects and in rodents. 
and we have an in-house we have an in-house computer model to study VCOI dynamics with, life cell, with, with, with cells and viruses. To conclude, this is, VCOI technology is not a drug. It's not even a family of drugs. It's a new way of doing antiviral medicine. And um, there are many, many applications to this uh, platform technology. Um, the, the obvious one is, of course, human health care. Um, but beyond human healthcare, we have also veterinarian healthcare, as animals get viruses just like the rest of us. Cleansing of viruses from blood products. Uh, many people are not aware that um, um, when we're getting a blood infusion, we're also getting a viral infusion. There is a, a, no way to completely eradicate viruses from a blood sample. And even mitigating biowarfare agents. This was our past. This is our uh, present. With VQOIS, it doesn't have to be our future. Thank you very much.